Okay, so once again, hello, respected professor. Um, good morning to you, Dr. Geibel, and good, um, sorry, the good afternoon to you, Dr. Geibel, and good morning to you, uh, Mr. Frank Gallucci. Happy Monday to you all, and I am Pranita Bambani, and this is my colleague, Chris Noy. And as students assisting in the 2020 and 2021 TAVIC project, we are extremely grateful and delighted to have had this opportunity to work together with you. What was more or less a spontaneous um, opportunity to work um, and spontaneous decision to collaborate virtually against the backdrop of COVID-19, it has now grown and cemented into a successful relationship between our two institutions and real world prospects for our students in order to interact and learn from each other. And through TAVIC, we identified synergies in spite and despite the challenges we were faced with. So keeping in mind the nature of our project, we have invited you to discuss and share your critical feedback, perspectives, and challenges as rewards during the life cycle of this project. So to begin with, could you kindly please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do in general? Maybe now, we can Shall start. I start? Yes, please. Thank you. Great. Um, I've been an adjunct uh, professor at business schools for about 18 years, but my uh, day job or the work that I do is as an investment banker and M&A advisor, merger and acquisition advisor um, for Whitestone Associates, a firm I founded about 25 years ago, maybe longer, but I stop at, at 25. Um, I find that the work that I do at Whitestone instructs our uh, my classroom activity and lectures. And Whitestone has uh, uh, kicking and screaming closed deals on five continents. So we are no stranger to, to the challenges of, of a global marketplace. Um, uh, in the summer of uh, 2019, I had the good fortune of teaching uh, for, um, for Priya. That's how I became uh, uh, interested in the work that she was doing and uh, that led to this Adelphi collaboration and here I am. That's very good that you're here with us. <laughs> uh, pleasure is mine, Richard. Um As a full-time professor at uh, the private university for seniors, uh, we don't have students, we have customers. <laughs> so we take care of them and uh, my duty is um, that I created a couple of years ago, a master program called digital management, which means more or less it's traditional management combined with everything digital. So um, we do believe that the digital revolution maybe is the largest revolution mankind has ever seen. Mm. And uh, since the students are already born a digital with their smartphone in their hand, I mean, it's, it's really best for them. Uh, to work with it and uh, to go after their study into the companies because they all need this knowledge. They know that the, the companies know that they have to do something, but they don't know what and they don't know with whom. So uh, that is the reason uh, um, why we run that. Besides this program, I'm responsible for the e-commerce institute which concentrates on everything in the area of social media, online marketing, e-commerce. We do a lot of project with companies and um, the uh, students uh, like to be in contact with uh, real world companies and already during their study have contact with uh, managers um, as they will become later on. That's very interesting and uh, we're very, very delighted to have the two of you to share this platform with us. So thank you so much. Um, and we will now proceed to ask you certain questions, highlighting your experiences with TAVIC. And we're very excited to hear what your feedback is. So I'll now give the platform to my colleague, Chris. Um, he will present some questions to you. Thank you. Okay, yes, so um, let's just begin by talking about the initial project expectations both individually had. So um, first off, I would like to ask you, um, so when you first learned about the TAVEC project, did you have any expectations or perceptions about what it, what it could entail? Shall, shall I start? Yeah. Uh, when I first learned about the project, project, I, I broke down the opportunity into two, two buckets, if you will. 
One was the content that a student could learn by, by the collaboration. And, and very honestly, the content uh, was secondary to the, an extraordinary opportunity to practice and learn soft skills, team building, working collaboratively across time zones, um, uh, developing a, a network, understanding the logistics of, of working across time zones and cross-culturally. Uh, my firm is structured that way. And it's been a lifetime uh, 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 lesson for me to, to understand what works and what doesn't. And uh, I saw it as an excellent opportunity for our students, not only to, to learn, learn the hard content that was associated with the collaboration, but also to begin to develop soft skills that frankly have a longer shelf life than most of the content that we teach in business school. So I was delighted to see the project because it was an opportunity to do both. Yeah, before the COVID uh, pandemic situation, we had the pleasure to send 400 students each year to New York. So they enjoyed exploring the Big Apple and living in a city that never sleeps. And uh, this time it was not possible. So I was very happy that we had at least this um, cooperation and that we can work on um, different settings, different perspectives, different views on our recent topics. And it's always uh, helpful since we have an international management program to talk with other cultures, with other people, with other colors, with other religions, with other ethics, whatever. But to learn from each other and um, try to find ways to make things better together. Okay, nice. Thank you. So, so so would you say the current Tavek project, project, does it meet your initial expectations or did it even fall short or maybe even exceeded it? Well, I, my view is that learning these soft skills takes a lifetime. It's not something that you read from a book, feed it back in, in an examination or write an essay, you check it off and you've learned it. Uh, I've been at it for decades and I still stumble, I still make, make rookie basic mistakes. Uh, so our students had the opportunity to learn as if it were a case study that we study in business school. Like you get a Harvard case study and you analyze the, uh, uh, the strategic intent of two companies buying each other. There's, it's very low stakes when you're analyzing those case studies. It was very low stakes to, for our students to learn a basic skill that they had to learn if they're going to be successful. More important now than ever before. So I saw it as a wonderful opportunity and it pretty much fell along the lines of where I expected it to be. All of us think we have wonderful soft skills. Most of us don't have the level of soft skills necessary to, to be effective in a global marketplace, including yours truly. Yeah, in Cologne, we have a saying, the first time you try to make things run. The second time you try to make things better and the third time you're nearly perfect so um we are just happy that we made it and uh, now uh, we can do things better we can work of whatever we want to improve and that is a, a very good way to continue learning like lifelong learning that's doing what we are teaching and um uh, uh, i would be happy uh, when we can use the basis we already have and think of one or the other thing we might want to add yeah, to become even more efficient or faster or whatever. That sounds that sounds really interesting, actually. Like, it's always nice to see things from a different perspective and to kind of better understand, like, the dimension of these things, like the Tavik project. And so, so as mentioned before, like the current world pandemic, it has forced us all to lean on those digital technology, technological platforms. And, um, and in order to uh, accomplish effective communication, moreover, Tavek was fully conducted virtually. So um, that brings us to our next question, which is regarding the virtual medium we are all using now. So my first question here would be, how was the complete virtual nature of this project? How did it influence your communications and relationships with students? I, I so enjoyed it because I saw from my own firm's perspective, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the new normal. Yeah. Uh, 
we have saved a, a tremendous amount of money. We and our, our, our modest boutique firm by not getting on airplanes and flying around the world. Uh, I, I've been known to fly halfway around the world for a two hour meeting and fly back. Not an efficient use of time, not an efficient use of money. And the older you get, the more you realize that it's, it's much harder. Now, we must learn to utilize the technology in, in its most uh, effective way. And uh, I don't think many companies are going to go back to completely disregarding this, the learning skills that we picked up during this COVID period. It, it, there's just too much money at stake. It's, it, there's too much cost to go back to the old way. Yeah, I totally agree, Frank. Uh, that's true. Uh, when we are looking at digital transformation, the digital, techno uh, digital technology was already there for a long time, but we, we, we the humankind, we just don't use that. Yep. Now we had to jump into yep. the cold water and <laughs> had to make it and suddenly found out, oh, oops, it's running. We can yep. do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so it's much more efficient. It's much faster. The only thing is, I'm missing the rooftop bar and the 42nd Street photo where I buy all my consumer electronics in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I completely agree. So I think like all the opportunities digitalization offers and like those virtual platforms offers, they have been used perfectly and optimized during this crisis even. And um, especially like coming from a student, technology has brought us closer even during such a time like Corona. And it's, of course, it's been in a very different, but still in an innovative manner. So, um, yeah. So my next question would be, what digital tools did you use most frequently during this project? And one unexpected challenges did you maybe face during the semester, during the virtual semester? Uh, we used Zoom primarily, mm -hmm. um, uh, but the uh, truth be known, I have an associate that helps me organize my Zoom presentations for the firm and for my academic life. And that makes it a lot, a lot more seamless in terms of instruction and, and sharing screens, ex et cetera. And if we have a technological uh, glitch, I'm not scrambling by myself. I have someone that's far more versed uh, who's helping to get, get things back, back to normal. Uh, my son chose a military career. Um, he's currently in Kuwait and he's introduced me to WhatsApp. Uh, and WhatsApp is used by, by the un United States military as the primary way of communicating with family and friends wow. around the world. Um, so I, I realized that there are different preferences here in the United States, depending on what you do for a living and what's around, what goes around the world. So we as Americans can't be arrogant about using technology that's only suited to us, nor can we be arrogant about always expecting everyone to be fluent in English like all of you are perfectly, because the world's a very complex place and we as a global uh, citizens are gonna have to learn to, to work and, and communicate effectively with a, a variety of platforms that are consistent with global protocol. And that's a moving target that we all must accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's actually true. Uh, one year ago, we had a, a lot of systems, like old systems, like Skype. Uh, and uh, we tried GoToMeeting. And uh, internally at the university, we use a lot of uh, Microsoft Teams because we have the possibility to set up local teams and have a, a file structure. But overall, I, I would say also that Zoom is accepted uh, mostly, especially with the students. Uh, I enjoy having them together and we had to learn like breakout rooms, uh, doing some uh, additional things to uh, help them not falling asleep, like Slido or something like that. I, I always get a little bit um, cautious when the mic goes off and then the video goes off and then you're sitting in front of a black screen and you're shouting, hey, somebody there. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a certain challenge. Uh, you have to change your teaching style uh, more into a dialogue. Um, to be quite frankly, uh, I love it, but I'm missing the personal meetings. So. Uh, maybe it will be what you said, Frank, before the new normal will be a mixture 
of both, maybe a hybrid situation where we should meet again, where we have lunch together, where we drink a beer and uh, where we do Monday morning or Friday afternoon an online meeting because we can avoid sitting for one hour in a rush hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe that's the best point. Exactly. Well, well said. I could not agree more. Yeah. No, definitely. Like I also think like, especially on Zoom, like back one year ago, like you had to learn it and, but nowadays like it's so easy to use. It's has such a usability. It's just a great um, platform, I think so. And, um, and yeah, like the Corona situation has been a great opportunity for Zoom to establish, I think. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, so let's take on like the transatlantic collaboration view of things now. And, um, My next question would be here. So in your opinion, can Tavex model be a successful education model for other transatlantic initiatives? Um, and could you elab elaborate why, if yes or no? I, I believe unequivocally it could be. I, I think we've learned a tremendous amount. Uh, uh, Richard mentioned earlier about the notion of practice um, and, and going up that learning curve. We are all smarter at utilizing uh, the technology and collaborating with, uh, uh, with our German counterpart. I, I look forward to learning from what we did well and what we did poorly and, and moving on to, to more exciting projects. Yes, definitely. It could be a blueprint, especially when we think of working together over far distances, yeah, different continents. And um, The only thing is the time difference. We have to make sure that this will work. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I mean, we have all the same common language. Uh, we mostly uh, have the same background as teachers or master students. Yeah. And uh, you even uh, could be the same student in, in, a, in the same uh, master program. I mean, we are not so different. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we should definitely continue this path and, and build on it and expand it. And, and, and let, let me add that um, uh, Richard and I are roughly contemporaries. I probably have a couple of years on them, uh, but there's not a big difference between us. We, we live different lives, different. We took different paths, but, but socially we would probably laugh at the same jokes. We probably know the same music. We, we probably could share our similar stories like we were all friends living in the same neighborhood. Uh, so there's not a lot of difference between the, the, the German student and the American student. Our histories, our cultures blend beautifully and, and, and collectively. As you move to different cultures, uh, if we were collaborating with, with, uh, with, with, with a Chinese university, uh, th there would certainly be differences that we would not encounter between the collaboration we've established. So I think this is a wonderful, wonderful learning platform. And we just have to keep in mind that we work in a global environment and keep playing the edge whenever we can by adding different cultures or different university uh, uh, relationships along with our core German-American relationship. Well, that's actually great to hear. And um... And so, um, so moving on to your personal academic experiences with the program, um, what would you say, what were the pedagogical challenges you faced in, te um, in teaching during the whole TAVIC project? Well, it was nothing that, I'm sorry, Richard, did you want to answer that first? No, no, please go ahead. It's my pleasure to, to hear. Uh, there, there was nothing that we, we, that was overwhelmingly challenging because I do work in a similar environment with my uh, with my work at Whitestone. Uh, what I miss uh, and what I think is is would add so much value is a point that Richard made a few minutes ago that that a complete virtual relationship is not as effective as a blended relationship where we spend some of our time face to face looking at each other's eyes, drinking a beer, uh, talking about, what one talks about as we connect as people first. And also perhaps um, if we have a creative challenge with an old fashioned flip chart between us, ideation of, of ideas and writing them down, doing that 
some of the time and you leveraging the technology some of the time is probably in my view the optimum blend if we could afford the uh, uh, the expense of, of collaborating uh, in the same room I, I think that would be the ultimate experience yep uh, absolutely um, those students who have been at the university before so the older ones that was not a problem the first semesters that was quite a challenge because they never met They never really started into a student life. They never, you know, met in classroom. They never worked together in a library. They went together for, for lunch or they were just hanging out for one and a half hour because one class is missing or whatever. Yeah. So uh, this building trust among groups is much harder when you do it digitally because you don't talk with a big group about personal things, how you're doing, how you feel, did you manage everything? Did you find an apartment in Cologne? Or how can I, you know, set up my formal things like my health insurance, yeah? So um, that's uh, that's hard for students. Uh, for us, uh, for, uh, from a scientific uh, administrative point of view, we, we are very happy to say that we managed it all, yeah? So we came out of the crisis not uh, worse, but I would say even better than before. So we have more students, we are efficient, we saved some money, and uh, we're even thinking about uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, we, it's an open question. Do we need all these rooms still? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What, what about the floors? Yeah. What is the facility manager telling us regarding yeah, the usability and so on? So. Um, uh, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that there are like these opportunities, like saving more costs and maybe saving money. And and of course, and I totally agree on what you said about the bachelor students who just started mm. studying and kind of missed that experience, student life. But yeah. Um, so it's, um, but I think that it's great, like to hear, like that these things are in a continuous work and that there is a progress and everything is getting better and um, improved and yeah, it's really, really nice. And um, so the next question would be uh, regarding um, about the grading. So how would you say how did you approach grading in your course and could you maybe discuss some of your thoughts on this as well as ideas around the collaborative grading? I, uh, grading was not part of my curriculum, the way it was structured for my participation. So I, I really have um, uh, nothing to add to that question because I did not have grading as part of it. Uh, I, I think grading soft skills is, a, is as much art as it is science, if we lean to that part of it. And, and we just have to encourage folks to continue to, to develop those soft skills. And there's probably some benchmarks of grading that would allow a student to, to revisit some of those soft skills that they're not particularly fluent in. But, but none of us are A students when it comes to soft skills. We have to just keep working to be adequate. Yeah, to my mind, those students who are active, who have some power, um, Uh, they are doing good. Uh, I have to be really careful to look after the students which are not so active. Yeah, we have a couple of female students, especially from Asia, from Vietnam. And I ask them, please speak up. And they say, yes, yes, yes. Do you understand? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then uh, I, I try to get a contact. And, and sometimes they, they just answer, well, it's just my personality. I can't say no and I can't shout, you know. <laughs> so. You have to make sure that everybody is online, uh, you know, that that they can continue with their personal style and that we take care of them. And that's uh, quite a challenge uh, we shouldn't forget. Yeah, yeah that's that's informative. So, um, so, yeah, so, well, now we would like to, like, highlight your experiences that you had with the students during the Tavik project. So, um, so a bit um yeah regarding the student perspective like in your opinion what would you say what were the advantages and disadvantages of this collaboration when it comes to the students i i will i will confess that there was an area that partially is my responsibility and i failed that um 
this was a remarkable opportunity to network. Now, network is just not having a couple of friends in a different country. It's serving your network. It's understanding who, who you're, you're collaborating with, better understanding how you might leverage each other's skill sets, seek advice from one another. When, when Bill Gates was asked, what is his most important attribute? Uh, and they thought they were gonna talk about his, his, uh, his, his capital positions. He said, the most important thing that I think I have as a person is my network. Uh, networks are something that you serve and develop and you establish throughout a lifetime. Uh, and it is, it is one of the most effective ways of being a, an efficient and effective manager is having that effective network. I don't think I was able to communicate what an extraordinary opportunity this collaboration is to network with people that live in a different geographic area, that have a different perspective, that have a different area code and zip code and phone number, uh, because they could be helpful to you if you're interviewing for an international position, if you uh, uh, are working on a transaction that, that, that they might have closer insight to. It is just a wonderful lifetime set of resources that we all need as professionals to develop, but I don't seem to be able to, uh, I, I didn't during this, this, uh, this uh, um, activity, I, I wasn't able to communicate what a wonderful opportunity it was to network. Not because they had a view about, about our, your university or students, they just didn't see the utility in networking with the same exuberance that I see it. Yeah. It, it was definitely a new approach. Everybody had to get used to it. And uh, we had a lot of uh, contacts. And uh, I would love to see for the future that we intensify the exchange, uh, maybe to meet more often and uh, in a deeper way. And uh, then everything will come by its own because students are always you know, very communicative. And when they feel uh, that they have some topics uh, in the same perspective, uh, this will go on its own. We just have to give them some more chances to do so. Yeah, definitely sounds great. Like the, so the advantages, they seem to be a lot, like also for the students, like they could connect and this whole um, focus on connection, co networking, I think is really, really important and great in the Tavik project. So it's, yeah, so that's really great to hear from you. And um, on this point now, now let's just like try to paint a futuristic picture or let's even create an ideal path on moving forward. So um, our question would be, could you discuss your rewards and challenges and how you see the path forward for Tavik project? Would you say there are specific ideas that you might have and that we might be able to implement in the future? From, from my perspective, it's always a joy and a privilege to work with the students who are embarking on, on their career. I think that um, a, a really exciting collaborative project could be that we would take a, a, a team consisting of um, uh, both U.S. students and, and uh, German students, uh, find an international company that might be familiar to all of us. Pfizer jumps out because of its uh, it, it's, uh, its COVID experience, but it could be Mercedes or General Motors and work on a specific project for this global company in a sphere that, that could create value and give them very specific insight into, into how global collaboration really works. And an idea that just jumps out at me is finding a, a potential acquisition either in Europe or the United States for Pfizer. Uh, smaller companies are, are, are springing up everywhere. As you know, Pfizer's collaboration with its German counterpart was able to, to create the vaccine. Uh, one of uh, my um, uh, colleagues is affiliated with Pfizer and he speaks really well about how that collaboration was had to be put on steroids to sort of figure it out. I know that the world buys companies globally and we could put a, a team together to serve for as a business development group for one of these companies, finding niche acquisitions for them. And if I could be of any use from my own perspective, I'd be glad to work with those, those students doing it. 
they will find out immediately that this is not about a grade. What it's about is creating value for your client and they will realize how difficult it all is to put it all together. And since it is a student project, I think our host corporation would be fairly liberal with us and probably giving, give us some view as to how they make the sausage in, in, in the same environment. So that would be a, 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 an extension of a collaboration that our two universities could, could work with. And, and I think it has all the elements of what, what we're working with now. That's a great idea, Frank. I totally agree. Um, I would love to see uh, these corporations uh, because uh, BioNTech and Pfizer made the world a better place. I mean, that's definitely. And uh, maybe we can, um, we can continue in this direction. Uh, that would be a, a very good uh, idea. And if you let me ask at uh, another approach, um, next to university, we have a place called Startplatz, which means like starting place. It's an incubator, a co-working space, an accelerator. Uh, we have approximately 100 startups there. And um, uh, I do on a regular basis uh, uh, an exchange program called IAP, Independent Activities Period, with uh, the Sloan School of Management, where I have been in my um, PhD time from MIT. And usually a student is coming over for like four weeks and, you know, uh, joining a team, working together. And maybe we can add that uh, now uh, digitally, yeah, because there are a lot of things going on. And uh, we have uh, every three months a new accelerator program with 10 to 12 new startups. And they are more or less uh, born digitally and internationally because when you go into the internet, you are with one person in the international. Yeah? Uh, so uh, maybe we have two possible approaches. Yeah. Uh, we, should, um, we should continue to work on. Sure. Sounds, Sounds perfect. I mean, both approaches like they they are very promising i mean both the pfizer appraiser approach and your approach mr geibel with the startplatz that sounds great and it's a great opportunity like with all the knowledge and the experience from the previous semesters and i think it'd be great opportunity and um so yeah so the next one would be um could you sum up your experience with topic maybe in one or two lines sure um I think it was enriching for all who participated. Yeah. Um, continue on our expansion plan and uh, go forward step by step. Yeah, uh, to uh, to reach a, a joint global international cooperation. Sounds great. Thank you very much. And now, um, connecting to what the two of you just said, we would like to wrap this up with a world play activity with you. Um, if you could explain the topic project in just one word, what would it be? I would use the word elevating. Okay, then I use the word rocket. Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Because of That's SpaceX. <laughs> That's very interesting. So I'm sure our students would also have um, a great journey to look forward to, great expectations. Um, we would really like to thank you both for allowing us to share this platform with you once again, and for all your honest feedback and um, even all the future recommendations that you have provided us with. Um, the ideas definitely mirror a successful development for greater global connectivity um, in education and especially in order to turn soft skills to hard skills. So once again, it's been a great pleasure. Um, um, and to acknowledge your personal experiences and feedback with Tavik, it's been wonderful. And we really look forward to continue working with you in the future 